If you've ever watched one of my videos all the way through until the very end, even past the end card screen, you may recognize this guy. I've personally made it a tradition to include a small clip featuring him at the end of all of my normal videos. Why? I don't know. It's probably a combination of my own nostalgia and how funny some of these clips can be out of context. NF number eight is that Toy Freddy, um, well, you know, he's kind of, um, fat. I mean Who is this person, you may be wondering? Well, if you watched my last video about the big collab Game Theory livestream, or you've been around in the FNAF YouTube scene for a while, you should recognize this guy as Smike. Smike was one of the biggest FNAF YouTubers that came out of the first major popularity spike of the series. However, people did not like this guy. Mike was a super controversial figure back in the day. We'll get into the reasons why later, but as someone who actually grew up watching Smike, I feel like I'm in the know enough to try and piece this whole story together to tell you guys what happened. I mean, if he's at the end of all of my videos, I must know something, right? This is a story about someone finding success on YouTube, making videos about a game series they had never even played, milking it for all it was worth, stealing fan art, making crazy ass contracts, getting copyright strikes, and fading away into obscurity. This is the story of Smike. And before I start this video, I just want to say, look at this amazing new light on my face. If you were to go and look at Smike's YouTube channel right now, you would see that his current profile picture is a bowl of cereal. Now, if you were to remember anything about Smike, you probably remember his old profile picture. Yeah, that's more like it. This profile picture also brings us to the beginning of our story. You see, while most people know Smike for his FNAF content, years before that he made videos on games that were completely different. The most prominent out of these games was Skyrim. His first video ever uploaded to the Smike channel that's still public was created on November 12th, 2011. The video is called Skyrim, How to Join the Dark Brotherhood. Spoilers. And it's exactly what you think it is. For some reason, when I went back to watch this video, I assumed that it was going to lack any commentary. But lo and behold, even in the first Smike video, you can hear his voice. The way to the Aretino residence, which is located in Windhelm. Pick the novice lock and get inside. But yeah, this is a pretty harmless video and it shows us Smike's humble beginnings. He would continue to upload Skyrim tutorials on his new channel and some other videos alongside them for quite a while. Like I said earlier, he started in 2011, so there's quite a bit of Smike history before the shift to FNAF. On March 4th, 2012, Smike would hit 10,000 subscribers. We have the Mass Effect 3 demo in the background, and I would like to start off by saying thank you guys a lot for uh, helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. This is actually quite a fast growth rate for a new channel, so clearly Smike had found something that worked and was beginning to see success from it. November 2012 rolled around, and Smike would upload something that would lay the groundwork for the future of his channel. He would upload a video called Skyrim Top 10 Facts. Now, I know nothing about Skyrim, so I can't say if this video is of any quality, but it did do quite well for him at the time, and would be the proper birth of his signature thumbnail style. He had used the font prior, but this was the first time it really worked and grabbed the attention of YouTube users. He would continue to upload videos on a semi-frequent basis over the next little bit, including this Smike Ice Bucket Challenge video. <laughs> However, in the summer of 2014, something would be released. Something that would not only change the entire landscape of indie horror, but also change Smike's channel forever. Five Nights at Freddy's. He wouldn't start uploading videos on the game right away, but over the next couple months, he would keep an eye on the series and its growing popularity. By the time December 2014 rolled around, Smike saw an opportunity arise. This wasn't just a one-time success. FNAF now had two games under its belt. Smike decided to deviate from his typical content in a major way for the first time since he started YouTube. Smike decided to upload a FNAF video. On December 1st, 2014, Smike would upload all secret screens Five Nights at Freddy's. This is a very, very simple video, just showing off the new secret screens that were in FNAF 2. But just the subject matter alone made this video do extremely well in the algorithm. But here's the thing. This may have not actually been his first FNAF video. For reasons that I'll get into later, Smike had to delete pretty much every single top 10 video on his channel. But if any of them were super old and came before this video, I would have no way to check now. The Wayback Machine doesn't have any snapshots that show these older FNAF videos and when they came out, so I guess we'll just have to go off pure speculation for now. Regardless, it doesn't really matter what order these videos came out in, because all of them are very samey. 
For the top 10 videos, it would be semi-related stolen, fan art slowly panning on the screen for five minutes. For news videos, it'd be a single PNG of whatever Scott posted to scottgames.com, plus the brightened up version of it, of course. And Let's Plays are Let's Plays. These top 10 videos are actually hilarious, but for all the wrong reasons. When Smike first started doing them, it would have been pretty easy to come up with 10 facts for characters such as Freddy or Foxy. But as he got deeper into the FNAF hole, 10 unique facts about every character began to become harder and harder. He still did it, of course. His channel would blow up because of these videos. But as a result of this, we have videos such as his Toy Freddy one, where he just calls him fat every other fact. I guess in a way, Toy Freddy is kind of a dumber version of Freddy. At Toy Freddy, um, well, you know, he's kind of, um, fat. He's, you know, rounder, more big boned. Maybe he gets more and more excited the closer he gets to you. Maybe he thinks for pizza, so his mouth starts drooling because he's so fat. Okay, I'm gonna stop. And also brings up the damn FNAF 3 box. And now finally for fact number one is that Toy Freddy will make a comeback in the third game. How do I know that? <laughs> okay, side tangent time. This is one of the worst Scott Games teasers ever made. It was released during the build-up to FNAF 3, and featured a box full of toy animatronic parts. This box ended up being nothing more than a prop in the office, but that didn't stop Smike from putting it in multiple top 10 videos to say, Insert character here is coming back in FNAF 3, guys! Look, they're in this stupid box! Okay, I got a little ahead of myself. Let's roll back a bit. This video is sponsored by Keeps. Listen, guys, hair loss is pretty cringe. <laughs> Did you know that two out of three guys will experience some sort of hair loss by the time they're 35? Trust me, I've seen one too many teachers during my high school days that were rocking the good old bald spot look. Well, don't worry, folks, because Keeps has you covered for all your hair loss related needs. Keeps is proud to offer clinically proven, research backed hair loss treatments that are all part of their subscription service. There's no need to visit a doctor's office or a pharmacy. All of Keeps' treatment plans are doctor approved and around half the cost of those you might find at a traditional pharmacy. Wow, what a steal! Subscribing to Keeps is easy, and you'll always get refill reminders so you never run low on your hair loss treatment products. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash uh yeah, or click on the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash uh yeah. Even when Smike started to find massive success with FNAF, he still wouldn't let go of Skyrim which is 100% fair by the way, he clearly enjoyed making videos about it. But as time went on, he realized that it was a lost cause, and stopped doing Skyrim content for a very long time. That's not to say he didn't try to branch out to other games though. He would still make videos about games that weren't FNAF, but people rarely seemed to care. He had grown this massive audience that only cared about FNAF. And you know what? I guess I can relate to that. Not to say that I'm dying to make videos and other stuff right now, I'm having a lot of fun doing this, but putting yourself in a box and only talking about one thing forever is probably not a good idea. I would like to fast forward a bit to his first Let's Play of FNAF 1. Mike had done Let's Play content before, so it really wasn't surprising that he ended up doing this. However, something he says in this video right at the beginning is... interesting. Hey, what's up guys? It is Mike here, and uh, welcome to my very first Five Nights at Freddy's Let's Play. Um, now I do have to admit something to you guys. I've never actually played Five Nights at Freddy's before. I've never actually played Five Nights at Freddy's before. I've never actually played Five Nights at Freddy's before. This was his first time playing FNAF? What? Yes, my friends, Smike, the now FNAF YouTuber, had never played FNAF before. He was making videos about FNAF for months at that point and never even played the game? I mean, don't get me wrong, Smike is a smart guy being able to grow an audience so fast, but on a game he had never played? How do you even remotely care about the content you're producing at that point? Wanna know the funniest thing about this FNAF 1 Let's Play? It's 8 parts long and he never finishes the game. I'm not talking about finishing Night 6 or Custom Night or whatever, I'm talking about finishing Night 5. Listen, I get FNAF 1 is hard. Trust me, that game can be a pain. But dude, at least finish your Let's Play series. Listen, I know I'm probably coming across pretty harsh here, but let me be clear. I do not hate Smike. In fact, I think a lot of his videos are really funny, including the Let's Play series I just talked about. But man, it's just the little things with this guy, isn't it? Lazy, mind-numbing editing, stolen fan art, easy top 10 in news content, 
Smike was essentially riding the FNAF hype train harder than anyone else at the time. Well, all these little things can add up to a lot, and it seems like people in the FNAF community at the time did not like Smike very much. In fact, most people hated him. This hatred slowly brewing up in the background would lead to the most infamous event in all of Smike's channel, one that would force him to delete almost every FNAF Top 10, cost him multiple channel strikes, and ruin his reputation even more than it already was. So, you know how I mentioned that he would use fan art in his Top 10 videos? Well, some other people noticed this as well. The artists. Many of the artists that Smike had used fan art from ended up getting pretty annoyed with them using their fan art in his videos. Which is totally understandable when most of the visual content of said videos consists of that fan art. He never asked anybody if he could use their fan art as well, which just added to the controversy. All of this built up until September 26th, 2015, when Smike would receive two different copyright strikes on four of his FNAF Top 10 videos. In a last ditch effort to save his channel from termination, Smike decided to delete every single Top 10 that used fan art. Hey, what's up guys, this is Smike here, and um, uh, I have some bad news for you guys. Most of my FNAF videos are gone. Um, so what happened is I actually had to delete them uh, because I got some copyright strikes. Now, I tried my damn hardest to find exactly who did this. But trust me guys, this is not an easy topic to research. Surprisingly, nobody cares about some random ass FNAF YouTuber enough to archive everything surrounding them. So I guess this will just have to stay an internet mystery for now. Only a day later, Smike would release his official apology on the situation, and credited every single artist that he ever took fan art from in the description, which was probably the best move he could have realistically taken at the time. Here's where I come in and play a little bit of Devil's Advocate. At the time, there was this sentiment going around that Smike was directly profiting off of other people's artwork. And I'm sorry, but this is an extremely stupid argument. When someone decides to watch a YouTube video, it's typically because the thumbnail and title are good and it makes them want to find out more. Pretty much every thumbnail he made for a top 10, besides a few exceptions, used official renders from the games themselves. Okay, so what about the actual content of the videos? While yes, they are full of lazily placed fan art, I can assure you that people were not watching these videos for the fan art. They were watching them for the facts. You know, the reason they clicked on the video in the first place? Smike could have used official renders and images only in these videos, and nothing would change in regards to the amount of success he found with his content. The re-uploads of these videos are literally proof of that. Yes, Smike taking all that fan art was a bad move, and he probably should have thought about his actions more, but this idea that he was directly profiting off artists is just incorrect. As you could probably imagine, this entire fan art situation was the peak of all Smike related controversy, and he slowly but surely would re-upload most of his top 10 videos with official renders rather than fan art. However, what if I told you that wasn't the end? While doing research for this video, I found something interesting on an old DeviantArt page. The title of the page was WARNING from Atlas Wipes with a bunch of exclamation points. And here's what it said on that page. So remember Smike? Yeah, that YouTuber that made a lot of artists really upset by profiting off of their hard work? He sent me this bogus contract to sign to use my FNAF fan art, yeah? It literally just says, I get to use every piece of FNAF fan art you ever made or will ever make for free with nothing in return. If you were approached with such a contract, please be advised that this is what it says. And I urge you not to sign it, since this guy makes a lot of money off videos and you aren't going to get one red cent off of it. Moreover, he wants to take full rights to your work away from you, meaning that he would literally own your art. I really want to make sure you understand this, and for heaven's sake, please do not let this slime ball take advantage of you. When I read this for the first time, I was genuinely astonished. This was posted in January of 2016, by the way, so months after the apology video. I really don't know why Smike thought this was a good idea. There was an update a little later where he ended up killing the old contract and stating that he was going to write up a new one, but as far as I know, that never went anywhere, and this was truly the finale of the Smike fan art saga. Okay, this is the part of the video where I give up on trying to talk about things in some kind of chronological order and just talk about random Smike lore. You good? If you were to take a look at Smike's Twitter right now, it's pretty much a shell of what it used to be. However, thanks to the power of the Wayback Machine, we can take a look at some of his older tweets. Oh, here's his merch drop, I guess. Got a couple people wearing it that he retweeted on his account. Gonna blur these faces out because I doubt any of these kids want to be caught wearing Smike merch in 2022. Although, this shirt kind of feels like a piece of FNAF internet history, so if anyone has one, you should definitely send it to me. Here's some other banger Smike tweets. My name's Jeff, and then followed by some Instagram link. 
Oh, here's a cool one. Smike tweeting about the announcement of the original Five Nights at Candy's. What about his Twitter banner? This goes nuclear. Okay, one final tweet. LOL, sorry about that. I'll tone down the sociopathy next vid. I have no idea what he's talking about here, but this tweet is just really funny to me. Okay, enough tweets. Before I can end this video, there's one more question that you're probably dying to know. Where is Smike? Well, after the fan art situation, he slowly stopped doing as much content, and the final FNAF game he covered would be Sister Location. He reported on pretty much every teaser, did one Let's Play episode of it, and then just said screw it and gave up with FNAF stuff. What reason would he stop, you may ask? Well, just two videos prior, he released a Fallout video that actually ended up doing very, very well. Much better than any of the FNAF content he had recently been releasing. I guess Smike took this as an opportunity to start making videos on something he actually cared about once again. So he came full circle and he began doing Skyrim and Fallout content for the first time in a very long time. He released one final FNAF video talking about Chuck E. Cheese, made two more Bethesda game videos, and vanished from the internet. The end of Smike was here. Why he stopped uploading is a bit confusing to me, since he was finally getting some decent traction on videos he probably actually enjoyed making. But for whatever reason, he must have just thought YouTube was a lost cause and abandoned the channel. That was until September 21st, 2020. Oh wait, that's my birthday, what the fuck? When he returned with a 16 second video talking about how Bethesda was bought by Microsoft. He vanished once again after that, only to come back one final time on November 28th, 2021 to do a video about Poppy Playtime. So Smike is definitely still alive if you're wondering that. He's also been kind of active on Twitter. He was tweeting out Among Us a bunch of times a little while ago. Maybe he plans on returning? Who knows at this point. I kinda hope Smike returns though. His departure from the FNAF community was so long ago at this point, that if he came back and started uploading FNAF content, it'd be pretty cool. Only if he wants to, of course. Clearly he cares more about Skyrim and Fallout, so if he wants to do videos on those games, that's all cool as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to the story of Smike. Did he deserve all the hate? Well, definitely some of it. But I wouldn't say that everything was warranted. Even though I talked about some of the more annoying aspects of Smike's older content, I don't hate the guy. Dude was mad smart for making a bag and then dipping, to be honest. If for whatever reason Smike is watching this video, please comment down below Among Us or something and I'll make sure to give it a big fat heart. Okay, I better wrap up this video here. I've been Oh uh, Yeah, and have a good one, everybody. Hey what's up guys, it's Mike here and today I'm going to be showing you my top 10 facts about the cupcake in Five Nights at Freddy's.